Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Emergency Management Associates. We're coming to you from the Area Command, 392 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina. I want to test this out and make sure it's still working here. Would someone give a 5x5 five five here to let me know we're on the air? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Emergency Management Associate. Hello, hello, hello. Are we on the air? 5x5 five five here? We've got quite a few people here in the chat already. Matt Martin, we haven't seen for a while. Thank you, Matt, for being here. Our buddy Demon Catman is here. Diane Large is here. Highway Runner is here. NCWQ Explorer is here. That's wonderful. Uh, Shirley Newberry, hello. It's good to see you. Ray Spur is here. Heidi Petrick. Uh, Tammy Steffi is here. Thank you so much for being here. Matt Martin came across as a first person that gave us a 5x5, five five, uh, meaning we're on the air and we've got good audio. I'm hoping that that good audio stays here. Um, we have a lot to talk about, guys. I want to talk about this because it's very important. As you know, we've had an earthquake over in Taiwan. Last night when we were on the air, we had a what the experts said was first a 7.5 magnitude earthquake over in Taiwan area. They said it was a 7.5. I'm going to correct them right now. I want you all to know how strong this earthquake really was. Okay, This was a major earthquake. Not just a 7.5, but an 8.4 magnitude earthquake. And I'm going to show you that earthquake in just a few minutes. I first want to show you what I know right now that is going on over in Taiwan. We've had over 100 earthquakes since that, or not 100, over 300 earthquakes that have happened over there in Taiwan since this first happened yesterday. Okay? Over 300 earthquakes. Okay? The My Earthquake app shows probably close to 100 earthquakes. But right now, there are close to three to five hundred earthquakes that have hit Taiwan area since we first came or talked about it last night. When we left last night they had like five earthquakes, the main one being a 7.4 earthquake, but this was far larger than that. I want to make sure everybody realizes just how strong that earthquake was. This earthquake did major damage and we're going to show you the damage as well. This was a big one. This was a huge one. I want everybody to understand what happened. Okay? This, this helioplot I obtained from USGS helioplots, and this is coming from uh, Norway, Spitsbergen, Norway. Look how many earthquakes are here. Now, it did not knock out and totally black out the helioplot. It did not do that. But this is far larger than a 7.4 earthquake. This is an 8.4 earthquake in the very least. An 8.4 earthquake. This is coming from Spitsbergen. Now I want to show you where else it came from. Okay. I want to show you Kivo, Finland. This is the helioplot from Kivo, Finland. Look how strong this was, even from Finland. A half a world away from the epicenter, just off the coast of Taiwan. A big deal. A huge deal. Let me show you some other or helioplots from literally all around the world. This is Barbados. This heliopot comes from Barbados over there in the Caribbean. Okay. 
Let's take a look about an, on another one. This comes from over in the Antarctic region, Casey, Antarctica. Look at this. Again, a quarter of the world away from where this earthquake happened over in Taiwan. Let's take a look at another one. This is over in Cathedral Cave, Missouri. Cathedral Cave, Missouri. Look at this. Again, an 8.4 earthquake. Okay. Cathedral Cave, Missouri. Okay. Let's go over to College Outpost, Canada. Sen or not Canada. College Outpost, Alaska. Look at that. That's a big deal over in College Outpost, Alaska as well. I'm not done yet. How about Disney World, Florida? The Helioplot from Disney World, Florida. Incredible. Really incredible. Okay? I'm not done. Let's look over at the Helia plot from Harvard, Texas. As you can see, this was a major earthquake. I do not believe it was just a 7.4 earthquake. It was a great, big, huge earthquake. Last off, Kirk, or Turks and Caicos in the Caribbean Ocean as well. Look at that. An 8.4 major earthquake in Taiwan. If that doesn't get everybody's attention, let's go even a step further. Okay? It's huge. It's huge. Now, I want to show you the quake damage. Okay? I want to show you what actually happened and then we'll talk about it. Again, we need to talk about it. Everybody needs to know exactly what has happened over there today since that quake. Folks, I'm not one to just back off and only give you the bare minimums. Okay? I'm not one to hide from what's going on. That will never, ever happen. Not in my lifetime or yours. That will never happen. Okay? But the damage from this earthquake is major. The damage from this earthquake is major. Okay? Just give me a second here. I need to pull this up here. Look at this. This is a building collapse over there in Taiwan. This happens to be a print shop in Taiwan. This is what's left of that print shop in Taiwan. Okay. Let me show you another one. This is an apartment building in Hualien City about 11 miles north, or excuse me, this is 11 miles north of where the epicenter of this earthquake was. Okay? That's an apartment building in Hualien City. I'm going to show you some more. This is another side of that same building. Look at that. And rescuer workers here are trying to save lives. Holy cats, it's not showing this picture. I don't know why it's not showing that picture. Here's that printing company again here too. Okay. Now, 
I want to show you relief efforts that are going on. Right here we have rescue workers from the Taiwan military trying to pull people out of that building. There are about 77 people trapped in that, inside that building as of about three hours ago. 77 people trapped in that one building. Look at that. That was early this morning. This is also military men trying to pull record or pull people from this wreckage of this building. And they're not showing it. I'm sorry. For some reason, I'm not able to show those pictures to you. I'm so sorry about that. But, needless, needless to say, this is a big deal. It's huge, guys. It's huge. I'm sorry. Here's that picture of rescuer workers trying to pull people out of the bottom of this building. The building literally collapsed in front of everybody. Okay? It's all over. It's everywhere. Um, just a second. Right here is those same workers trying to pull people out of that building here. Finally, it got to you guys. I'm sorry, guys. This is a huge picture that I thought we had brought down to level where everybody could see it, but apparently not. I want to show you what's going on here. And I'm sorry if I'm making any of you dizzy from showing you this and moving this picture around so everybody can see it, but I think it's worth it. Everybody needs to understand what's going on. Look at that. This is insane. This is literally insane. Let me see if there's more here. Right here. No, it's not going to let me show you the building I want to just show you. Darn it. Again, people trapped still. Okay? Let's talk about what happened. Okay? I've been able to pull together stories from literally all over the internet, all over the world. Dozens of people are still trapped in tunnels along the perilous highways through Taiwan trapped in tunnels. This is the strongest earthquake in 25 years, causing widespread damage. Now the numbers vary. The first numbers I saw earlier today were seven people killed. Now I have numbers of as high as 963 people dead and over 800 injured. Those numbers do not surprise me because every time we have had an earthquake of this size, usually we have numbers that resemble each other between the number numbers of casualties and the numbers of injuries. Those numbers pretty well match. China and the United States has offered 
disaster relief and disaster assistance to Taiwan. Now, will Taiwan accept it from China? That remains to be seen. A toddler was rescued from a collapsing restaurant early this morning. A powerful earthquake, excuse me, power, powerful earthquake aftershocks are continued and expected over the next four days at least in Taiwan. Over the next four days. We've already had over 300 earthquakes in the last, I want to say, 22 hours. Dozens are understood to be trapped in highway tunnels after that 8.4 magnitude earthquake struck Taiwan's east coast. Okay. Now, another news organization has said at least 900 people have been confirmed dead and over 900 injured. Like I said, I think I have an updated number of 963 people confirmed dead as of about two hours ago. Dozens of earthquakes are continuing to rattle Taiwan today and rattle China as well. We'll talk about China and the earthquake in just a few minutes. Okay. Tremors over in Taiwan also set off nine landslides and debris covered the hillsides over Suhuna Highway in Hualien, Taiwan, which runs along the east coast. Okay. According to Taiwan's National Fire Agency, NFA, people are trapped in two road tunnels along the Spa Highway, one of the most dangerous roads in Taiwan, straddling between the mountainside and the ocean, trapped in the tunnels. Rest teams are working to get to those who are trapped. Seventy-five people were stranded in various tunnels and they still have to be rescued in, as of this morning, which is right now in Taiwan. The sun is just barely coming up in Taiwan as we speak. The earthquake, again, was the strongest in 25 years in Taiwan. It set off tsunami warnings on the islands across the neighboring countries between China and Japan. Nine-foot waves hit the area of Okinawa and the neighboring islands around Okinawa, Japan. Unreal. Widespread damage and power outages across the entire area of Taiwan and neighboring China. The epicenter struck at 7.50 a.m. local time in Taiwan, about 18 kilometers south of Taiwan's Hualien City. That's according to the USGS, if you can do that. Okay, I have it as 11 miles south southeast of Hualien City. The USGS allegedly measured this earthquake as a 7.4. That's what it came out as first. Actually, it came out as a 7.5, and then they downloaded it. We've had subsequent aftershocks that they also have downgraded. For example, there was a 5.8 magnitude aftershock earlier this morning. I believe it was about 10.30, 11 o'clock this morning, Eastern Time. And USGS downgraded that 5.8 to a 4.2. Over a magnitude and a half less than the original quake, from 5.8 to 4.2, over a magnitude and a half less than it was. Incredible. Incredible. Taiwan's own monitoring agency put it as a 7.2 earthquake, if you can believe that. Shock waves have been felt from coast to coast, west, north, and south, all throughout Taiwan. It's rather a small island looking at it on the map. Okay, Tremors were captured on live news 
news uh, television shows throughout Taiwan. And they delivered the bulletins and they stayed on the air as far and as long as they could. With giant screens on their sets swayed. The giant screens on their sets, television sets, the station sets swayed, and the lightning rigged overhead were also swaying back and forth. Commuters were wrought from side to side on roadways and in those tunnels. Okay? Incredible. People braced themselves on trains. The railways and the light rail trains and subway trains stopped. And they're still skewing people out of those subway train tunnels. Okay? The train swayed side to side and they're all there is CCTV showing the passengers trying to hold on for dear life as a train swayed back and forth on the tracks. The train swayed back and forth until they suddenly and violently stopped, with one woman forced to crouch down. Sighs of relief were let out as a shock wave subsided, and then another shock wave happened. Back and forth, literally all night long into today. People were forced to evacuate houses. The CCTV footage captured items falling from shelves and breaking inside a local cafe. Shockwaves again were felt across Taiwan. Tremors were captured on live shows all over this, the country. Um, Shock waves were felt over in China and also southern Japan. In Japan, the weather agency put the quake's magnitude as a 7.7. Japan's weather aid put the quake as a 7.7 .7 magnitude quake, saying several small tsunami waves reached parts of the southern prefecture of Nau. The tsunami warnings were later downgraded. Were later downgraded to a, to an advisory. Okay, in the Philippines, seismology officials warned coastal residents in several prefectures in Philippines to move around. Chinese state media also said the quake was felt in the southeastern province of Fujian. F U J J I A N. F-U-J-I-A-N, while a Reuters news reporter said that it was also felt in the commercial hub of Shanghai. That's quite a bit inland from the eastern side of China. Linda Chen, 48, told a news agency Reuters that her apartment in downtown Huolin City had been so badly damaged in an earlier earthquake in the that they had to move. Her new apartment block was also damaged in yesterday's earthquake. Yesterday's earthquake meaning Tuesday night into today. Now, they're also saying, and I got eyewitness reports saying that they believe their house was going to collapse at any point. One person said we thought it we had already experienced it in 2018 and it would not hit us again. We are so nervous now. One woman died trying to save her cat. News reports talk about a Taiwanese woman named Kang and she was found under a collapsed beam of her building. Workers called her but she did not respond back to them. She died in an earthquake after going back into the collapsing building to try to save her cat. Unreal. Unreal. A survivor of the earthquake said that a warehouse crumbling was like watching a mountain collapse. The woman's name is Lou, L-I-U. She watched intently as rescuers were carefully picking their way through the remains of the warehouse. Tremor set off at least nine landslides and debris collapse on hillsides along the Suhua 
Highway, S-U-H-U-A Highway in Hualien. That highway runs down the east coast of Taiwan. The United States will provide Taiwan with any necessary assistance and it is monitoring the earthquake's potential impact on Japan. The U.S. National Security Council spokesman Adrian Watson said, quote, We are monitoring reports of the earthquake impact in Taiwan and we are going to continue to monitor its potential impact on Japan. The United States stands ready to provide any necessary assistance to all those who are affected and they are in our prayers. Beijing also sent out a statement where they expressed heartfelt condolences and offered aid to Taipei following the earthquake last night. Again, another news agency has 963 people dead. Beijing Taiwan Affairs Office spokesman Zhu Feiling said the mainland was closely monitoring developments and is willing to provide support for disaster relief efforts. The epicenter of the quake, which struck at 7.58 a.m. local time here yesterday, yesterday our time, 7.58 a.m. Taiwan time. Okay, now we're in the same day at least, but they're going into the morning there on Thursday morning, right now. Does anybody have questions for me when it comes to Taiwan? I'm monitoring your chat right now, or our chat. Race versus 8.48 a.m. Taiwan time. The people in Taiwan are saying 8.58, but that's all right. There's 10 minutes difference. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. You guys are awesome. I'm also hoping that the rescuers will get to the survivors of this quake as soon as they possibly can to try to find more survivors okay 77 people in the tunnel alone in the two tunnels alone that are trapped in their motor vehicles oh, oh, excuse me that's what happens when you have rain here like we did last night for about two hours and all of a sudden it's sunny again the pollens and the bacteria at the ground level because of the rains are really bad right now it's unreal Polly says she has a question how can they afford to help Taiwan when they can't help our own homeless and veterans here in the United States that's a good question maybe someone needs to ask Mr. Biden. Maybe someone needs to ask Mr. Biden. Because they're not going to do it. Biden has, has no intention of helping anyone. I don't think Biden has any atten intention of literally helping anyone at this point. All he wants to do is bring people in from everywhere, including China. Tammy's asking, are there any agencies accepting financial aid for Taiwan? I don't know of any agencies right now except for possibly the Red Cross. I haven't seen any, any memos or anything come across the desk here uh, in regards to the Red Cross, but I will check with the Red Cross at the end of this broadcast. Gina Keynes here says, bless you, it's her first time here with our uh, program here. I appreciate that so much. Ray Spur says, Juby Joe, I assume that you saw on TV, was a tachometer narrows bridge in Washington State. I don't know too much about that right now. 
Juby Joe saying possibly a design disaster. There are people, I hate to even say this, there are people that said that this was a design disaster. There are people that said something was hidden on the eastern side of Taiwan that caused that quake. I cannot confirm or deny that. I have nothing to confirm or deny that. I'm just telling you what I've heard as well. I heard that late last night, about 2 o'clock this morning. Okay? Any other questions about this? This is probably the biggest story anywhere. Literally. Probably the biggest story anywhere around the globe. Because of the major disaster that has happened. It's huge. It's huge. And I don't believe it's going to get any less huge for quite some time. With the earthquakes that are presently happening, okay, it's not slowing down at all. That's a problem here. The aftershocks that are happening are not slowing down. Nothing. Nothing. I've seen this kind of disaster happen many times during the past five years. Many times during the past five years. It's not surprising a little bit. Not at all. That's what's so sad here. Okay, these kinds of disasters happening for years. And so this does not surprise me. It's just so very sad. I just, I feel for the people over there. I have had friends in Taiwan myself. And I fear for their safety. I literally fear for their safety. It's, it's something that never ends. This kind of thing seems to never end. It continues and continues and continues. I've been watching this for a long time. And by the way, guys, guess what? You're seeing this video live after five years of broadcasting here on the Emergency Management Associates Network. Today is our anniversary of broadcasting for five years on EMA. Five years of being here. Aubrey's here in the chat says this sort of damage was, was a much higher magnitude, I agree. And I showed you that evidence at the beginning of the program when I showed you the heliopods literally around the world. Half a world away and all the way around the world. No tsunami happened to come. Yes, there was a nine foot tsunami, but as it moved north over towards Japan, it got less and less, and then the Japanese agency canceled the tsunami warning and put it as an advisory. But they were expecting a nine foot tsunami wave to hit over in the Okinawa area, the islands surrounding Okinawa. As the tsunami wave moved north, it got less and less, and like I said, the Japanese Meteorological Agency lowered the warning to an advisory. That's what happened there.
Now Skip says my audio is breaking. Oh, great. The surrounding open all. As the tsunami wave moved north, it got less and less, and like I said, the Japanese Meteorological Agency lowered the warning to an advisory. Okay, I'm just monitoring the audio here. Sweet Polly Purebred just gave us another $5 super chat. Polly, thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. Audio is breaking. Okay, I'm not hearing the audio break right here. Maybe that's a good idea, good thing. You guys, the rest of you experiencing any kind of audio breakup here? I'm not seeing it here where I'm at. I just pulled audio here. We're about on a about a 25 second uh, delay here for whatever reason. NCWQ also gave us a $2 super chat. Thank you so much for that. God bless you both. We really appreciate that so much. Sweet Polly Purebred says 5x5, five five, California, or not California, <laughs> Catherine Sigerson in Canada says 5x5 five five there, and that's great. And Aubrey over in South Dakota is saying 5x5 five five there. Thank you so much. And Aubrey, I'll return your call after I get off the air. Ginger Gals, 5x5. Five five. Tim Gibson says it's okay. That's great. Does anybody have any more information or questions for me? Okay. I'll be happy to answer any questions about the Taiwanese earthquake. And we're monitoring the television channels. And I monitored a radio broadcast from Taiwan earlier. Linda Covington says can't hear. I'm so sorry, Linda. Doggone it all. Anybody have any more? Mark Stolte says good now. That's great. NCWQ and Polly, thank you for that super chat. We really appreciate it. And speaking to the super chat, before I continue on with this broadcast, within the next 24 to 48 hours, you're going to find YouTube here giving everybody the possibility of contributing to this program on a monthly basis. Okay, I've set up three different management of the, um, uh, what do they call it, um, memberships. I've set up three membership levels, $1.99 a month, $2.99 a month, and $3.99 a month. We're going to be instituting this so everybody will have a chance to contribute on a membership level. Now, I'm not requiring it out of anyone. I want to make that point perfectly clear. But I'm just giving everybody the opportunity. Okay? $1.99 a month, $2.99 a month, and $3.99 a month. Okay? People have asked me how they can contribute to our program, and I'm just giving you this opportunity. You can still put out super chats. You can still contribute to our PayPal. And you can also contribute to our um, through our mail program at 104 North Green Street, Box 105, here in Morganton, North Carolina. The zip code is 28655. Down in our program description just below this video right now, you have links to that uh, post office box and you also have links to our PayPal locations as well. I appreciate that. I appreciate it very much. Donna Howard and her husband have contributed $40 to our program about two days ago. Actually, it was on, I believe it was on Easter Sunday through PayPal. We've had numerous other people, including Linda Covington, who's also contributed over on PayPal as well. Now, we did get a contribution that I spoke about last night. I received a card from our friend Jeannie in Snowflake, Arizona. I want to show you this. Look at this. It's a beautiful card. 
in the card she put out a check for us and I really appreciate that Jeannie for a computer she's had she says I have been with you long before I moved to North Carolina when I was still in Santa Utah Jeannie sent me an Afghan that's still on her, on Carolyn Mine's bed today. A beautiful Afghan that she crocheted. She also knit me two sweaters that I wear when it's cold outside or cold inside. <laughs> she also gave me two long sleeve shirts which I greatly appreciate. Jeannie, it's wonderful what you've done for me and our program and for my wife and I. She says, stay well, be happy, know that you are loved by all and most of all by God. By the way, just so you know, Jeannie is 83 years young. She says, how did that happen? <laughs> she says, you provide a great service to many with your program. It's also important that you have working equipment. So she, like I said, she sent us a check. She says, I hope this will get you back on track. We need you and the information you provide. God bless you. Jeannie, thank you so much. We appreciate that so much. Okay? We appreciate everyone who contributes to our program in any way, shape, or form. It's great. It really is. She also said this, okay, know not who you are, but what you are. Inside your heart is God's loving essence in each of us, in each of us. Know not who you are, but what you are. Inside your heart is God's loving essence in each of us. Thank you so much, Jeannie. I will keep that card for a very long time. And by the way, just so you all know, I have a file of each and every card that each, and letter that each of you has sent me since the very beginning, five years ago. I have a file of every card and letter that we have ever received. And I greatly appreciate those. And sometimes I go back through and look at them and read each and every letter and card. It means the world to me. Noble Frog says, wow, Ron, I got you on full screen instead of a sliver. I know. I am constantly trying to improve this program. I really am. I am, I have got some software today and I'm going to get more software coming this next week that will override any stuff that this venue that we're on here can do to us. In the past, you've seen crackling um, audio from us. You've seen video that is lacks a lot of comfort to everybody because it's all over the place or you may not even hear me or see me because they interrupt the video all the time. Well, that's going to stop, okay? I'm pulling out all efforts to make sure that what the problems that we've had, both video and audio, will stop, okay? Incredible. Grace for purposes, we really need to hear this today. Happy tears. I agree. My wife woke up this morning and told me, congratulations. She remembers when a man with the name of D was telling us all in his chat on his own program here on YouTube that he was no longer going to broadcast. And I told my wife then, somebody has to continue putting the information on the air. He did stop broadcasting for quite a while. So I started on the air five years ago today. Five years ago. And we've continued it. And we're going to continue for a very long time going forward. 
Bill of Virgo is asking, did the Taiwan quake have a P as a wave? Yes, it did. It had numerous P waves. Now, thank you for asking that, Bella. Let me explain what happened with this earthquake last night. There were two P waves. One was a 7.5, which really was an 8.4. The other had a 7.4 within three minutes after the first earthquake. Two separate and distinct P waves. Then all heck broke loose. Okay? Bella, thank you for that. I was going to tell you that earlier when I showed the, um, the helioplots. It's incredible. Tim Gibson is talking about the New Madrid Seismic Zone in the Cincinnati, Ohio area. Guess what, Tim? You guys in Ohio, Illinois, and Indiana got hit today. Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio got hit today. And guess what? The agency, the United States Geological Survey, has not said squat about it. Earthquakes in all three states today, and USGS said nothing. They were 3.0 to 3.7 earthquakes, small sized earthquakes. 3.0 to 3.9 are considered to be small earthquakes but they can be felt. Those small earthquakes can be felt. USGS said nothing about it. Richard Smith says a 1.1 tremor just hit western Turkey. No small surprise there. That kind of earthquake continues to happen all the time, every day over there in western Turkey. It's eastern Turkey along the Syria border region that I worry about. Western Turkey along the Syria border region, I worry about. Why? Because this time last year, February 2023, that Syria-Turkey border region got hit by a 9.0, 10.0 earthquake. And USBS said it was only a 7.5. It was a 9.0, 10.0 major earthquake that left a nine mile long fissure, a nine mile long fissure that was eight stories deep, deep enough to put a eight story building down in that hole. Incredible. And yet USGS has never even mentioned that there is a fissure there. We showed you pictures of it last year. Heidi Petrick just gave us another $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Heidi. We appreciate that so much. She says, Heidi says, blessings to you and your endeavors, Ron. Thank you, Heidi. I will do everything I can to be worthy of all of your love and support. I really appreciate that. Rina says, I wish EMS EMSC would post the small quakes in the USA too. Yeah, many times US or the EMSC, the European Agency, doesn't post all the earthquakes here, even in the United States. They do miss quakes. USGS, on the other hand, completely does not post them because they don't want anybody to know about anything here in the US. They pick and choose what they want to show, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Noble Frog says, she would go back to grab her cat also. I would too. My dogs trapped in an earthquake. I would move heckin' high water to rescue my pups. They are my children. They depend on me. I also, my wife and I, depend on their emotional support. They give that conditionally, and we love them to the moon and back. Unreal. Linda Covington says, thanks for the new mail address. Thank you, Linda. Really appreciate that. Linda, by the way, gave me an idea for our new mailing address. And I took it up, checked on it, checked. It was actually the cost of the old post office box we had in Valdez versus the cost locally here. It was a lot less per month. I shouldn't say per month. On a 
six month schedule. It was a lot less. And it's five or six miles closer one way. Our new mailing address is only one mile away from us. I could walk there. On a nice day, I could actually walk there if I needed to or wanted to. One mile away. It's seven miles from here to Valdez, North Carolina, where I had my post office box in the beginning. So it's a good thing. Bella said she saw a building that was leaning at a 45 degree angle on TV. Oh yeah, and that was not the only one. There were buildings leaning all over Taiwan and buildings that were collapsed. That's what happens when we have a major earthquake anywhere. Buildings flattened. Buildings flattened. In Northridge, California, 1994, one of my police partners and I, who is still a very good friend of mine today, he and I were asked to drive up to Northridge to help support Northridge PD and LAPD and Los Angeles Sheriff's Office in Northridge, which we did. Northridge buildings were flattened. Quite a few buildings, apartment complexes, houses, and business offices were flattened by a 6.9 alleged earthquake. It was probably also a lot stronger than a 6.9. Back in the day, I did not necessarily worry about how strong an earthquake was, except that size scared a lot of people. A 6.9 earthquake, if you said that, would scare a lot of people because they knew it was a very strong quake. A 5.7. A 5.7. Four years ago, in Salt Lake City, caused millions of dollars of, da of damage. Millions of dollars of damage in Utah, Salt Lake City. 25 miles south of there is where I used to live. And yes, I was sitting on the edge of my bed at 7 a.m. in the morning when that earthquake hit, and my bed moved. Now, my bed just barely moved. I knew it was at least a 3.5 earthquake because the bed moved. I felt it. My feet were on the floor. I was sitting on the edge of my bed. I immediately turned on the television, I got on the internet, and started doing my checking, and it was a lot larger than a 3.5. 25 miles to north, it was at least a 5.7. It didn't knock down any buildings, however. Facades of buildings and brick walls fell to the ground. In Salt Lake City, the Latter-day Saints have a temple in downtown Salt Lake City, and there, there's an angel that sits on a pinnacle on top of the temple, and the shaking knocked that angel off the top of the temple, knocked it to the ground. Buildings all over were damaged. Homes, businesses, everything were damaged throughout Salt Lake City and the outlying areas. And the earthquakes continue to happen. 1,000 earthquakes over a six month period. Over 1,000 earthquakes in a six month period in Salt Lake City as a result of that 5.7. Incredible. And it happened on March 18th, my mother's birthday. And I kind of laughed. I kind of laughed. On my mother's birthday, we have a very large earthquake. It was kind of a celebration of sorts. My mother hated earthquakes. My mother hated earthquakes. She passed away in 1991. We'd only had one 5.7 in San Diego at that point in time. She told me that there were other earthquakes when she was growing up. I didn't know about that. I'm real. We celebrated my mother's birthday with a 5.7 in Salt Lake City on March 18th that, that year. Incredible. 
NCWQ is here saying that Morocco's had an earthquake, but with no magnitude again. That also does not surprise me in the least. Okay? All the time, the agencies do not have magnitudes for whatever reason. And they can give us any kind of reason that they want. Okay? They give us every kind of reason that they want. It doesn't make it right. Okay? It doesn't make it right, but they do. One last look at what's going on in Taiwan. All of these earthquakes that are purple or lavender are large earthquakes. Okay? Just so you can see them here. All the earthquakes there, they're, we have red earthquakes which are moderate. We haven't had any small earthquakes at all, aftershocks, but we have had moderate earthquakes and we've had large 5.0 going up to 7.0 early this morning. So the major earthquakes were continuing to happen last night going into this morning. Since then, we've had multiple 5.0, 5.5 earthquakes literally happening all day long. And I don't believe that these are the only ones. They're showing individual earthquakes, but they're also showing 220 plus and 110 plus right here. Okay? I can verify now that we've had over 300 earthquakes since this earthquake happened last night. Over 300 earthquakes yesterday. Incredible. Literally incredible. Now I'm going to go over here to Morocco. I've got my EMSC map here that my earthquake app is showing us here. And they're not showing any earthquakes here in Morocco at all. There it is. Morocco is in the northernmost part of Africa. They're not showing any earthquakes at all. Okay? That could be because one of those earthquakes was a surface quake, apparently. They don't want us to see that, do they? Over in southern Spain, over in southern Spain and just off the coast of southern Spain, we have a small um, swarm of quakes here. Okay, 6, 1.8, and a 1.9. So we have 1, 2.56, and all the other quakes here are just tremors. Tremors are earthquakes that you don't feel, and even the 2.56 is a minor quake, and most minor quakes, people don't feel those as well. They're less of an earthquake than a 3.0. 3.0s on up can be felt. Now, we've had some 3.0s the USGS has told us about Los Angeles. They said there's nobody that has felt reports. Bull crap. I call bull crap on those people that say there were no felt reports because there was. Over in Tomasello, Spain, we had a 2.0 here. A 2.0 right there. Okay? That's probably about 200 miles, maybe more, north of the southern coast of Spain. Gibraltar. Gibraltar, or not Gibraltar, Portugal. <laughs> I got Gibraltar on the brain. This area is on the west side of Spain. This is Portugal. Look at that. Wonderful thing. A 1.8 tremor in southern Portugal. Northern Portugal, we have a 2.6, 2.5. 2.6 and a 2.5 in northern Portugal. Off the coast. Off the coast of Port Portugal. We have a 3.7 here in the Atlantic Ocean. North of the Azores. A 3.7 north of the Azores off the west coast of Portugal. Okay? Now, let's go over to France. Let's go over and look at France, Germany, and Switzerland. Look at all these earthquakes in France. Southern France, by the way. Okay? Going up towards Normandy. Now, I'm going to try to speak a little French here with names. 
Chlonis sur Loire, Pas de Loire, France. Here's a 2.2 earthquake over in northern France. Okay? Let's go just a little bit south of there. This is a 2.4. Minor earthquakes over there in France. South of there we have a 2.2. They continue happening. How about that? A 2.1. Then we go over a little bit south and east. We have another at Cluny Bourgenet, France, Tomate, France. This is another 2.2. And I know I'm butchering French, the French language there. I don't know how they pronounce those town, cities and towns, but I just butchered it. I know that. Okay. In that same area, we have a 2.4. Switzerland. This one is in Switzerland. It's a 1.4 tremor. 1.4 tremor in the Alps of Switzerland. Further to the east. Schweiz, Switzerland. This is a 1.5 tremor in Schweiz, Switzerland. Unreal. Let's go north. This one is in Germany. League RP Germany. This is a 0 0.8 minor microquake. A microquake over in Germany. Okay. Now, let's go over to northeastern Italy. Okay. Frui Venetia Guglia. Fruili is F R I U L I hyphen V E N E Z I A Venetia, and the other word is G I U L I A Italy. Another 0 0.8 microquake. Okay, northeastern Italy. Then we go over to Slovenia. This is a 1.0 tremor over in Slovenia. Interesting, huh? Now we're still in, in Europe. Montenegro again. Remember Montenegro about a month ago? We had a 5.2 earthquake. Today we're having a 4.7. That This 4.7 is an aftershock of that 5.2 a month ago. Okay? But, before we go any further to the south, Central Italy, 20 earthquakes in Central Italy again. They've had upwards of 40 earthquakes here in Central Italy before. Now, these are all 2.0 or less. 2.0 or less. 1.0 in Tuscany. Umbria, Italy. A 0 0.9 microquake. Marsh, Italy. A 1.4 earthquake tremor in Marsh. M-A-R-C-H-E, Italy. Okay? And they keep going. 1.0 Abruzzo, Italy. A-B-R-U-Z-Z-A, or Z-Z-O, Italy. Abruzzo, Italy. And... Also, 1.7 in Abruzzo as well, and Lazio, Italy here, 1.4 there. Now, I want to show you this. Look how many earthquakes are really there. Okay. Let's see if we can count all these earthquakes. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 23 earthquakes here in central Italy. 23 earthquakes in central Italy. Yes, we've had some twos there as well as ones and a few microquakes. Now, what have I said about central Italy? 
when we get all these earthquakes like they're seeing now and continuing like this, there is a large earthquake in central Italy's future. There's a 5.0 in Italy's future. I promise you that. Now let's go over further south. Campania, Italy. 1.2 and a 1.5 tremor. Campania, Italy. C-O-M-P-A-N-I-A, -A, Campania, Italy, okay? Let's go further south into the foot boot of Italy, okay? Calibra, Italy, this is a 0 0.9 microquake, and I'm going to show you these, or talk about these earthquakes going south, okay? Southwest from there is a 2.4, just off the coast of Italy there. A 2.4. Further south into the eastern med or the western med a 2.6 and also a 2.2 here. A 2.6 and a 2.2 there. Okay. Over in the border area of Sicily and Italy. The border area of Sicily and Italy. We have a 0 0.7 and a 1.4 tremor there. 0 0.7 microquake and 1.7 tremor right there at the toe of Italy and the beginning of Sicily. Okay, over in Sicily, right here, we have a 1.8 tremor, tremor over in Sicily right there. We go further south just off the east coast of Sicily and we have a 1.8 right there, okay? USGS isn't showing these, are they? Not at all. They're not gonna do that. I wanna show you something. This is Greece. Look at all the earthquakes here in Greece. Now, I'm not going into and name all of them. I'm only going to talk about a couple of them, okay? Over near the Aegean Sea, right there in the center part of Greece, okay, near Petrus. Another 4.6 earthquake hit over in Taiwan just minutes ago. Over here in the Aegean Sea area, this is a 0.4 microquake, okay, but Petrus, a 0.60. A 1.0 tremor and a 1.0 tremor there. Two 1.0 tremors over in Petrus. A location here in Greece named after the Apostle Peter. Okay? Petrus off the coast of Greece, the reason they named it Petrus was after the name of the Apostle Peter, but it was a penal colony. Anybody that the Romans didn't like, they tossed in jail over on the Isle of Petrus. Peter was just one of the apostles and other people that were stationed, <laughs> I hate even using that word, but they were put in jail on the island of Petrus. Okay? Over on the western side of Greece, we're seeing 2.0 and a 1.9 earthquake over here in the western islands of Greece. Okay? However, if you look at all of the earthquakes here in Greece, it's appalling that USBS does not say one word about any of them. They're not showing any of these earthquakes in Greece at all. It's sad. Over in Greece, we have like 25, 26, 28, 30, 33. 4, 36, 38, 42, 43 earthquakes here in Greece alone. 43 earthquakes here in Greece alone. USGS does not say word one about it. Nothing. Not a thing. But that's not all, folks. There's more. I want to show you this. Over near Crete, look at all these earthquakes in, near Crete. Let's add that up too. Now we're having 50, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56 earthquakes in Greece alone. 
between Crete here and over in mainland Greece. But that's not all, folks. There's more. Okay? A few minutes ago, somebody mentioned, I think it was Richard, mentioned a 1.0 over in western Turkey. These islands off the coast of western Turkey also belong to Greece. They're called the Dokanese Islands. The Dokanese Islands. Let's take a look at the Dokanese Islands. In the northern area, just on the west coast, off the west coast of Greece, a 2.0. Here is a 1.9, 2.0 right there. Going south, here's another 0 0.8 in the Dokanese Islands here. 0 0.8. And look at all the earthquakes in western Turkey. That's just western Turkey. Okay? Just briefly, the northern side of Turkey, 1.7, 1.0, another 1.7. Here's a 1.3 right here in northern Turkey. I'm just going to name a couple more. 1.0 over in west central Turkey, 1.7, 1.8, 2.6. 2 2.6 .6 over here in the eastern med. Mediterranean. Okay? Not all yet. That's not all yet. Folks, I want to show you this. I just got through talking earlier about the Turkey Syria border region. Look at all these earthquakes here. Look at all these. All over the Turkey border area. There's about 52 earthquakes here, at least by my count, before I came on the program. 52 earthquakes here in the Turkey Syria border region. Now, just for kicks and giggles, okay? 2.1 minor earthquake, 1.8 minor tremor, 3.7, 3.7, that's a small earthquake, a small measurable earthquake, 1.9, 1.6. 1.5. Look at all these earthquakes right here. Huge swarms. Turkey, Syria, border region. Like I said, about 42 earthquakes here today. 1.7s, 1.4s. I'm just picking them up here and there. Yes, there's a bunch of ones here. Minor tremors but there's also been 3.7 small earthquake there. If anybody here was hurt in the 9.0, 10.0 earthquake that hit in this area a year ago, they're getting a little bit shook up with the continued earthquakes and tremors all throughout this area because they're feeling it. They are feeling it. This is a desert area of Turkey and Syria, and they're feeling it. A year ago, they were thrown out of their houses, buildings were flattened, and like I said, a nine-mile-long fissure opened up there. A nine-mile-long fissure opened up there in Turkey. Okay? It happens. And here, over here in southern Turkey, we have a 2.4 right there as well. Okay? So the Syria-Turkey border region is still getting hit. Now, I want to go over to northern Iran. Northern Iran. All these earthquakes here still belong in Turkey. Northern Iran had a 4.7 and a 5.2 large earthquake up here earlier today, and USGS and the EMSC have taken it down. They're not showing any earthquakes at all. Okay? USBS is also not showing any of those earthquakes in Turkey at all. There's about 80 earthquakes overall in Turkey. They're not showing any of them. Not one. About 40 earthquakes over in Greece. USGS not showing those. That there is over 100 earthquakes between Greece and Turkey. USGS not showing one. Period. Sad. 
Now, over here in the border region of China, China and Russia here, okay, up north, up north, Tajikistan. This is a 3.7 earthquake right there in Tajikistan, the border region of Russia and, and China there. Going south, there's a total of six earthquakes here. Going south, Tajikistan, a 3.8, 3.6, and another 3.6. They're all small earthquakes over here in Tajikistan. Two more. Another 3.6 in Afghanistan. 3.6 in Afghanistan and a 3.4 also in Afghanistan right there. Again, USBS is not showing any of these quakes. None. Anatolian is asking me a question here. Sir, any opinion or predictions on Turkey's biggest city population of 20 plus million? Some say it will happen there. I'm sure it will. No, I don't have any idea when any of those quakes are going to happen. I know they're going to. Okay? I can't predict earthquakes. I can forecast earthquakes when I see a pattern of earthquakes heading in a certain direction. I can forecast that then. But USGS is not even showing half the earthquakes. Not even. Not even close to half. They're maybe showing one-eighth of the earthquakes worldwide. Worldwide. What kind of, kind of garbage is that? Now, right now, they're not allowing me to show you earthquakes in the USGS. I could, I could bring down my camera and show earthquakes in the USGS is showing us. And maybe just a minute here. And show you earthquakes already here. Okay. Let me move over here to Europe. Okay. We're showing the earthquake on about Montenegro. See that earthquake in blue right there? That is a 4.7 over Montenegro. Unreal. Unreal. They're not showing any earthquakes whatsoever in Greece. Here. Not one earthquake. Okay, I'm going to zoom in here to show you. This is all in the north, the northern waters north of Greece. Okay. This whole area here is the Dokinese Islands. Here, in this area, are considered the Dok And I showed you all the earthquakes that are happening in this area. This earthquake, like I said, is north of Crete. This is a 4.6, 4 point earthquake. A 4.0 earthquake. That's the only one that there's nothing else in Greece, there's 40 earthquakes, and they're not showing one of them. Earthquakes here, north and south of Crete. This is the Anatolian Fault. I mean, over here. See that? This is the Anatolian Fault of Turkey. It swings south of here and continues westbound, just south of Turkey here, and then it goes south, south of Crete. Greece here, and then it goes up west of Greece here, over into Italy. Anatolian Fault. Okay. Also the edge of the plate. Those are the plate boundaries. This is the plate. Okay. The fault also separates right, and it goes further south here. All the way in here to the Gulf, the Gulf of Aden. 
void here. Okay. That's again US does show any of these earthquakes to Jiga Center in Afghanistan, not one mention of it. Nothing. Nothing. They're not showing any earthquakes over here in India, Nepal region at all. Nothing. They're not showing any earthquakes up here near uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, nothing. They're not showing any earthquakes even over here in eastern uh, China. The seismic, the seismic waves from this earthquake over here in Taiwan also were felt over here. Okay, explain that to you a little bit earlier. Look at this huge swarm I was talking about. There's over 300 aftershocks, and USGS is only showing these earthquakes. There is the alleged 6.4 that they showed at 3 o'clock this morning. Three o'clock this morning, another six point four. Okay, unreal. There are over three hundred earthquakes here, and this is all they show. Now, I have talked to you guys about feelings about the USGS, and they're showing earthquakes. Right after the Ridgecrest quake happened in California, a reporter asked Lucy Jones, who then was talking from the USGS slant. A reporter asked Lucy Jones why USGS did not show all of the earthquakes on the map. Lucy Jones did not stop one little tittle, not one little bit. She immediately responded back to the reporter, there was no room on the map for all the earthquakes. Yes, there is. And there's plenty of, er plenty of map here to show all the earthquakes here, but they're not going to do it. They're not going to show all the quakes here because they don't want to. Heaven forbid they show everything going on. Over 300 earthquakes here, and they're saying 320 earthquakes worldwide. 320 earthquakes worldwide. I call BS. I call big time BS. There's probably over 50, 50 earthquakes worldwide. USGS is not showing them. They're not showing them. Just like they're not showing all the earthquakes over here in the I'm about to show you. Okay? They're not showing them. They're off the northeast coast of the Philippines. The Mindanao, which is the largest island here in the Philippines, that I'm showing you right now. Look at this. This was a large 5.1 earthquake here. A 5.1 earthquake off the northeast coast of Mindanao, Philippines. Okay, this happened at 4:51 this morning. They're showing a 4.8 here. Really, really, that's really interesting. Okay, a 5.1 and a 4.8. That's really fascinating to me. Okay, let me show you what they really had over in the Philippines. Okay. I can't wait to show you this. This is wild. This is wild. <laughs> there were three other earthquakes here. Three other earthquakes. Another 5.0, a 3.3, and a 3.8. So we had a 5.1, another 5.0, and 
a 3.7 and a 3.8 here off the coast of Mindanao, Philippines. They showed two and there's actually five. They showed two and there's actually five. Interesting. Then further south, further south, just off the south southeastern coast here, this is a 3.0 earthquake down here. A 3.0 earthquake down here to the south, just off the coast. Now, given all of these earthquakes were in the water, even the two fives, even the two fives were out in the ocean. And the ocean waters absorbed the seismic energy. The ocean waters of the Pacific absorbed the seismic energy of all these quakes. So nobody even probably felt those on the coast of Mindanao, Philippines. They probably didn't even feel them. But they happened nonetheless. USBS shows two earthquakes, and there's six there. Six there. Oh, we just had another 4.3 over in Taiwan, off the coast of Taiwan, 27 minutes ago. Fascinating. Again, over 300 earthquakes over in Taiwan, and USGS is showing 43. 43 out of 300 plus. Interesting. Let's go down to Indonesia. Good old Indonesia. Okay. Now, as you know, USPS will show us what they want to show us. Okay. If you have your map, the USGS map open, they're showing one earthquake over just north of the island of Java. It's a 5.0 off the northern coast of Java, Philippine, or Java, Indonesia. Okay? Right there. Right there. A 5.0 earthquake right there. As well, as well as a 4.4 earthquake is there too. USGS not showing anything. A 5.0 and a 4.4 modern earthquake just north of Java. Okay? But that's not all, folks. There's more. There's more. Look at these. These are the only ones that the EMSC, the European Agency, is. Okay? Now I'm only going to poke out a couple of them so you can see what I'm talking about. Sulawesi, Indonesia here is a 3.1. Sulawesi, Indonesia is a 3.1 here. Okay? Interesting. Fascinating, as Mr. Spock would say. Fascinating. Captain, let's beam down to the surface. Central Indonesia, 3.7, 4.1. 3.7, and that's not all, folks. There's more. A 3.3 and a 3.6. Swarm of earthquakes there in Central Indonesia. USGS, not saying a word about it. Interesting, huh? East of Java, two more threes, a 3.3 and a 3.2 Eastern Java. Fascinating. Fascinating. How about Northern Sumatra? Here's another 2.8 in Northern Sumatra. Okay. Minor earthquake. Yes, there are minor earthquakes. How about southern Indonesia? Maluku, Indonesia. Here's a 4.4. USGS, not saying word one there. Nothing. 
USGS is also not saying word one about an earthquake in southeastern Australia. A 2.4 minor earthquake down here in southeastern Australia right there. 2.4 earthquake near Washpool, South Australia. Okay. Then a 4.3 over again in Afghanistan 43 minutes ago. <laughs> Unreal. Now, they definitely did not show any earthquakes at all here in New Zealand. Nothing mentioned there, did they? There's over 25 earthquakes down here in New Zealand. Okay? How about that? How about that? Over in the Kermadec Islands, this is a 2.83 minor earthquake. Usually we have fours here in the Kermadec Islands. We have moderate earthquakes here, or large earthquakes over here in the Kermadec Islands. This is just a minor earthquake in the Kermadec Islands. Going south, down this same trench, there's two trenches. One comes out of Fiji, and this trench here comes out of Tonga. Okay? This trench is going, this trench here from Fiji is going right down the middle of the North Island of New Zealand here. Right down the middle. Okay? We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 earthquakes right here. 16 earthquakes right here. We have quite a few earthquakes right here in the Bay of Plenty. This is called the catcher's mitt because this looks like a catcher's mitt from the side here in the Bay of Plenty. In this catcher's mitt, folks, we have 2.7, 2.44, 3.0, 2.51, 3.4. New Zealand, a 3.0 earthquake right there. Gisborne, New Zealand right there. A 3.0 earthquake there as well. Okay? Let's continue down here. Hawks Bay. This is a 2.3 over here on the east coast of New Zealand here. What did we talk about? Another 5.0 in Taiwan just 40, 35 minutes ago. Another 4.0 in Taiwan. Right here off the east coast of New Zealand. What did we talk about late last week? This is also a huge subduction zone. Like I said many times before, this whole area, including Tonga and Samoa, and Fiji to the north and east, they're all part of the huge subduction zone here, including Indonesia as well, and Papua New Guinea, and Taiwan. Seven different subduction or seven different tectonic plates all throughout this area subducting. There's a tech two tectonic plates meeting here. The Indo-Australian plate over here meeting with the Pacific plate out here. Subduction. In this case, the Pacific plate here is subducting under the Indo-Australian plate out here to the west. This is a huge subduction zone. In 1918, we had an 8.0 earthquake right here. An 8.0 earthquake just off the east coast of Rau Island, which is the North Island of uh, New Zealand here. And they're saying another one is expected within the next 20 years. Another major 8.0 earthquake or larger here on the east coast of New Zealand. Okay? There over in Hawke's Bay right here, we're seeing a 2.80 right there. That's just a minor quake. Nothing compared to a 5.0 or an 8.0. Now, for those of you that are new to the program, Demon Catman says a 4.9 in the Kuro Islands to the north of Japan. We're going to talk about the north of Japan in just a minute. 
thank you for putting that up, Dean. I, Dean, I appreciate it. A large earthquake in the Kuro Islands to the north of Japan. Now, for those of you that are new, right here, dead center in the middle of Rohu Island, north the North Island of New Zealand, we have a super volcano right there. This lake is at the top of Topo Volcano. This is Topo Lake here. A super volcano. Now, as with a lot of volcanoes all over the world, guess what? We have populations over here on the north side of the volcano. There's a city right here on the north side of Topo. Interesting. There's also people right here. Okay? Yes, farmland and other people living there. And all around here, we have populations over here on the west side of Topo Volcano. And over here to the south of Topo Volcano, we also have people living here. Okay? Literally all over, huh? And here's another population down here around a super volcano. A super volcano. Oh, here in New Zealand. There's multiple other volcanoes, for example, right here. This is Rapahu volcano right here. Rapahu. This volcano is supposed to be a dormant volcano. It erupted in the early 1900s. And it got through erupting, I believe, in 2001 again. Okay? It's not dormant by any means. Right now it's snow covered. Okay? Rapahu Volcano. Over to the southwest here, we have another volcano, and it has not erupted in a long, long time. I don't remember what that volcano was called. Okay? Over here, just to the northeast of that volcano, we have another 2.52 earthquake, minor quake. Okay? Now, let's go to the water right between the North and South Island. This is called the Cook Strait. Here we have a 2.1. There are three earthquakes over here in the Cook Strait. A 2.1, a 2.5, a 3.2, and a 2.36. Okay? Minor earthquakes there. Then we go over to the South Island. Mount Leaford Village, Canterbury, New Zealand. A minor 2.27 earthquake here on the north part of the South Island. That's not that far from Christchurch, New Zealand. Not far from Christchurch, New Zealand. Then we go south to the center west side of the South Island. Ramsey, New Zealand, we have a 2.26. Okay? South of there, South Park, New Zealand. 3.0 and another 3.0 right there. Small earthquakes. Down here, Southland, New Zealand. This is a 2.5. Okay? The entire islands here in New Zealand are rocking. Okay? They're rocking. Again, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 earthquakes in New Zealand. 27 earthquakes in New Zealand. USGS says nothing about it. Not a thing. Over in Vanuatu today, we have another 
large 5.1 earthquake here in Vanuatu, and an aftershock, a 4.5 magnitude moderate earthquake, a large and a moderate earthquake in Vanuatu today. Interesting. How about Hawaii? How about Hawaii? Okay. For my friend Laura Marie from Oregon that I believe is here today. Marvin Manson is here again. Marvin, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Trevor Harper says, what I think is the sun's flares are giving us what they call a magnetic wave towards our Earth core. You're absolutely right. Geomagnetic storms coming from the sun. You're absolutely right. So we're experiencing a small wake as we rotate around the sun. And believe me, it could be a hundred times worse. I hope not. I hope not too. Things could be a hundred times worse. If we got an X-class flare off the sun right now, things would get a hundred times worse. I promise you. Okay? What they said those earthquakes were in Taiwan would be pennies to what would happen if we had an X-class flare right now. We would have more 7.0s and even 8.0s around this globe than anybody can think about. Okay? It's incredible. It's incredible what we could have, what we've seen before. We've seen it happen before. All the time. Dust you dust, it says Alec Baldwin. Yes, I know. I do look like Alec Baldwin. Pat myself on the head in that one. I don't want to be him. He's going to go to jail. Alec Baldwin is going to go to jail. Getting back to Hawaii. Okay. USGS is not going to show you this. Look here. This is Pala, Hawaii. Pala, Hawaii. We had a 6.4 earthquake hit here in southern Pala, Hawaii. Or Pahala, I'm sorry. Pahala, Hawaii. P A double L A. Hawaii, Bahala, Hawaii, P-A-H-A-L-L-A, -L -L Bahala, Hawaii. Okay, these are just minor earthquakes here. Just about, I want to say, eight weeks ago, we had a 6.4 here. There was some minor damage here in Pahala, Hawaii. Pahala has a small town here. It's not a big town, it's a small town. People live here, there's a high school here, and everything else. Laura Marie has her grandkids over here. She has her grandkids living here in Pahala. It's getting rocked. Pahala here is like a gas station over in Hawaii. There is a huge magma plume of magma down in the southern Pacific Ocean. Way down here in the South Pacific, there is a huge magma plume coming up from the center of the Earth. That magma plume provides magma for all the volcanoes all around the world. In this case, the magma plume comes up here to the Big Island of Hawaii. Okay? Pahala is like the distribution point for all the magma to the volcanoes around Hawaii. It's a distribution point. The magma comes over here into Pahala. It goes up here to Kilauea. Holly Mau Mau Crater here at Kilauea. Or Kilauea at Holly Mau Mau Crater. And, folks, we're still getting earthquakes in Fern Forest and over in Leilani Estates. No earthquakes today in Leilani Estates except Fern Forest. Three earthquakes in Fern Forest. A 2.77 a 1.88 and a 1.8. A 2.77, a 1.88, and a 1.80. Fern Forest. Okay? Fern Forest. Back in 2019. 2019. Okay? All the way out here to Leilani Estates. We had 24 fissures erupt after the magma over, excuse me, 
the lava at Kilauea, the lava over here at Kilauea, no, right here. Kilauea is right here. The mat, the lava poured out of Kilauea and was absorbed back into the magma chambers down here and Pu'u'u'u volcano, which is just south and east of um, south and east of Kilauea, also emptied out. For several days, the scientists at the Hawaii Volcanic Observatories were wondering where in the heck did the lava go. Two days after those two volcanoes um, were left barren of magma or lava, all of a sudden, 24 fissures erupted from fern forest all the way out here to Leilani Estates. 24 fissures erupted. Now, since that time, we have more named volcanoes over here. After those fissures started closing down, there were several craters and also volcanic cones that opened up here. Those are now named volcanoes. Named volcanoes. When all this lava started pouring out of these fissures, lava poured out over here in Fern Forest and also out here to the ocean in Leilani Estates here. I want to show you this. Lava poured out to the ocean up here in Leilani Estates. Okay? Poured out literally everywhere. Okay? 1,500 homes were destroyed. 1,500 homes were destroyed and over 3,500 people were left homeless on the Big Island just because of that, those fissures opening up. And from what I'm hearing, the people over here in Leilani Estates, there are still areas here in the, in the lava field that still have steam coming out of them and outgassing, sulfuric, uh, sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide coming from these open, uh, open volcano craters and uh, cones here. Okay, still sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide coming from that lava here. A couple of the cones have lava still reaching out there, and they can see the incandescent red orange of the lava at the top of the cones. It's still outgassing. And some part of the lava field is still outgassing as well. It's incredible. Paula Clark says, Hi, Ron. Thought you'd left YouTube. So glad to find you here, and I pray you're doing well. I am doing better. I am doing better. Laura Marie's here in the chat. Thank you for being here, Laura. I really appreciate it. She says, Bahal on the Big Island is where her grandchildren go to school. That concerns me. It's still concerning to me because we're still getting a large number, a swarm of minor earthquakes there. We had swarms of minor earthquakes hitting Pahala before this even ha before the larger earthquake happened. It could happen again because there's magma again coming into the Big Island at Pahala, and Pahala is like I said the distribution point for all the the volcanoes all over the Big Island, not just not just here at Kilauea. Kilauea Volcano. Right there. Pu'o is right here. Kilauea is over here. Okay? There is some... Kilauea is not erupting right now. But there is steam and outgassing going on in the caldera of Kilauea. There's right about 100, 150 feet down from the rim of the crater, there is a crater floor where lava has hardened. And in some places of that crater floor, there is steam and outgassing going on. Sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide coming up from that crater floor. Okay? Now, this picture that you're seeing here 
of Kilauea is not current. It's probably two years old. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not what's happening at Kilauea at all. And I want to go over here to Mauna Loa. This is Mauna Loa Volcano. Mauna Loa is also outgassing. It's not erupting, but there is some outgassing going on here at Mauna Loa. A year and a half ago, Mauna Loa erupted. The Mauna Loa volcano stopped erupting about a week later. It was only a small, moderate eruption. Okay? Mauna Loa is going to erupt again. North of Mauna Loa, we have Mauna Kea Volcano. Mauna Kea Volcano right there. Mauna Kea has more earthquakes right now than even Mauna Loa to the south. At some point in time, Mauna Kea is also going to erupt. The sad thing about this, okay, I want to show you what's over here at Mauna Kea. There is a astronomical observatory here. NASA also has some buildings over here on the edge of Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea has not erupted in a great long time. If Mauna Kea does erupt, all these, this observatory and the NASA complex here, as well as the other scientists that claim home to Mauna Kea here, their jobs will be interrupted. Their jobs will be interrupted if that volcano goes again. Okay? This is a closer look at Mauna Kea right there. The observatory and the other NASA buildings and scientists have buildings there as well. At some point in time, Mauna Kea is going to erupt. It has not erupted in a very, very long time. Out here to the west, there are also observatory buildings out here. Okay? Now, we talked about Kilauea, we talked about Mauna Loa, and we talked about Mauna Kea. But there's a fourth volcano here. There is a fourth volcano out to the northeast. Interesting enough. The fourth volcano is over here to the northeast. It's called Hualalai. And yes, Hualalai has very little, if any, earthquakes or even tremors. Sometimes they have microquakes here at Hualalai. But that's just about all. That's just about all. But the other volcanoes over on the island have been erupted. They're not right now. They are not right now. Okay? But that's what it looks like over on the big island right now. Just so you know. Okay? Out here to the northeast part of the island is the town of uh, Hilo. Right out here. The town of Hilo, Hawaii. Thousands of people live over here. Okay? Several of our viewers live over there near Hilo. Okay? Kathy Paina lives over there. Our friend Gina lives over there in Hilo. Quite a few of our friends live over in Hilo. We also have friends over on Maui and over at um, Oahu. Quite a few people live over on Oahu as well. Unreal. Unreal. Alaska. Alaska is also getting hit. I want to show you this, okay? Look at this. 50 plus earthquakes over here in south central Alaska. 50 plus earthquakes here today. And look here to the north up to the north shore here of Alaska, the oil and gas pumping region here in Alaska. I want to show you this, okay? 
these two earthquakes are up in the Arctic Circle area. This is the Arctic Circle. This is Arctic Village right here. This is a 3.0 earthquake in Arctic Village here. 3.0 earthquake. But what about this one on the North Shore? Let me show you this earthquake. This is a 2.5 near Katavik, Alaska. A 2.5 in Katavik, Alaska. Katavik, Alaska is just east of Prudhoe Bay. Prudhoe Bay is way over here to the west. And from here, all the way over here on the north shore of Alaska, we have oil and gas pumping operations. Okay? Katavik, Alaska, a 2.5 earthquake here. And this one over here in Arctic Village is concerning. That's a 3.0. A 3.0 there. Okay? Now, we've shown you earthquakes over on the edge of the plate in Denali National Park. Look at the earthquakes here, okay? They form almost a half circle around Mount McKinley. Mount McKinley is right here. These are little itty bitties. These are little itty bitties over here on the northwest and southeast parts of Denali National Park. 1.8 tremor. And folks, guess what? Here's a 2.0 and the 1.8 right here, okay? Guess what it says? East, southeast of Denali National Park. I'm sorry, this is northwest of Denali. Northwest of Denali. Even the EMSC is not even recording exactly where these earthquakes are. Their directions are way off. This is northwest of Denali up here. Okay, a 1.8 and a 2.0 earthquake up there. And that's not all, folks. There's more. Here's another 1.0. Supposedly of Cantwell, Alaska. Now, up here to the east and southeast of Denali, and this is where it gets weird, okay? Down here, they're saying this is west of Cantwell. This is a 1.8 east of Cantwell, east of Denali, okay? They're saying it's southwest, okay? They can't get the direction straight. And this one here, also southwest of Cantwell, it's a 1.6 tremor, it's southeast of Cantwell, Alaska. Then we have all these other earthquakes south of there. Look at that. Lining up with Northern Denali National Park. Let's take a look at those. Each and every one of them. Okay. Chase, Alaska, 1.4. South of there, 1.7. Susitna, Alaska, 1.7. And 1.5. South of there, again, Susitna, North Alaska. This is a 1.4. Still, we're right here in this swarm of quakes going north and south here. Let's continue. Willow, Alaska, a 2.2 earthquake. 1.3. A 1.5 in Big Lake, Alaska. And there's other earthquakes here as well. A 1.3. A 1.3 and a 1.8. Tremors at Big, or Big Alaska. Okay? Big Lake, Alaska. Fascinating. Fascinating. I want to show you this. Okay? I showed you all those earthquakes running out of um, Denali National Park. What do we have down here? What do we have down here, guys? This is Anchorage, Alaska, right there. Just so you know. Anchorage, Alaska. And we have had all those earthquakes coming out of northern Denali all the way down here. Susitna, Alaska. And across the waterway down here to um, Anchorage, we don't have anything. Fascinating. 
that's never happened. Usually we have earthquakes over here on the other side of the water, right here. Okay? Fascinating. Okay? Then we go over to Mount Rita. I just love Mount Rita because they never tell us where the earthquakes actually are. They try to buffalo us. This is a minus 0 0.52, which means it's above sea level here. This is Mount Readout. Mount Readout, Alaska. They say it's a minus 0 0.52, indicating above sea level. Guess what, guys? They're far off. This is 1.7 miles deep. 1.7 miles deep, guys. It's not above sea level at all. It's down inside the volcano. Down inside the volcano. Mount Readout, guys. Mount Readout. Fascinating. We go south. Salmon atop Alaska, south of Denali. Again, a minus 0 0.38. Interesting. Below sea level, or above sea level? Sorry, this is 3.4 miles deep. It's not above sea level at all. See what I'm saying? They say one thing, but they're not covering themselves. They're not covering themselves. Okay? Pedro Bay, south again of Mount Redoubt. Pedro Bay. Hmm, fascinating. Another 0 0.24, but in this case, and I just love this, okay? In this case, this is 0 0.7 miles deep, 7 tenths of a mile deep, and they're calling it above sea level, okay? It's climbing the volcano to Mount Redoubt, okay? Climbing the volcano towards Mount Redoubt. Then another volcano, and this is not all the earthquakes. I'm just pointing some things out here. Now we're down at Old Ililama Volcano here. Fascinating. Old Ililama Volcano at the volcano. They're calling this a minus 0 0.13. A 0 0.13 microquake. Okay? Above sea level again? No, it's not. This is 2.2 miles deep. They can't, well, they can't lie to us because we have the data. They lie to us on the outside, but when we further investigate, they don't know what they're talking about. Incredible. Okay? Laura Marie says she's always interested in the Big Island Volcanic and Earthquake Information. I am too. I'm watching like a hawk because I also have friends there. Okay? Not just your kids and grandkids, but I also have friends over there. And I appreciate Laura so much. She's been a dear friend for a lot of years. I love and appreciate her and her husband, John. Great, great people. Now, I'm with Linda, okay? I've got a gut feeling that things are happening. But again, they're not telling us about it. This is always a case. It's always a case. Okay? It's crazy. Sulfur gas. Yes, there are sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide now coming from Mauna Loa and Kilauea. Crazy. It's crazy. South of um, Old Ilioma Volcano, we have a minor microquake near Ugashik, Alaska here. Ugashik, Alaska. There are earthquakes happening all over the place. Further down in the pe peninsula here, Ivanoff Bay, minus 0 0.32. Again, a volcano over there. 
south of there over near Sandpoint, Alaska. Sandpoint, Alaska here, we have a 2.30 earthquake right here. However, guys, we can't take our eyes off this. This is the exact same location where we had a 7.5 earthquake. A 7.5 earthquake just south of Sandpoint, Alaska right here. Okay, we had a 7.8 and an 8.7 earthquake here. This happened just three years ago. Three years ago. And they can try to pass this off as a 2.3 nothing earthquake. Yes, it is a minor earthquake. But again, we had two major earthquakes. A 7.8 and an 8.7 there just two years ago. Or three years ago, I'm sorry. Three years ago. Okay? Further south, King Cove, Alaska. A minor microquake. It was 0 0.81 microquake. South of there, also at Volcano Faults Pass, Alaska. Minor microquake. Accutan, Alaska, microquake. Uh, two of them, in fact. Oon, Alaska. Down here, we have another volcano. This is a 2.0 earthquake here near Oon, Alaska. Okay, it's erupted before, and it's going to erupt again. Also, guess what? There's a cone right there, a volcanic cone right there. We have some earthquakes here. I wonder what we're going to have. Four earthquakes here at a volcano. Nikolsky, Alaska. They say this is 42 miles northeast of Nikolsky, Alaska. Incredible. This is a 0 0.31 at the volcano, a 0 0.14, a 0 0.46, and a 0 0.96 here at the volcano. At the crater of the volcano. Unreal. I hope you guys can see that crater right there. Look at that. Four microquakes at the volcano. Why are they happening? Because the volcano is rumbling. Magma is recharging at the volcanoes all around the world. That's what's actually going on. That's what's actually going on. Now, over here in Adak, Alaska, this is a 0 0.2, excuse me, not a 0 0.2, this is a 1.7, 1.27. Uh, tremor here, Adak, Alaska. Okay, this is the Aleutian Islands area. The Aleutian Islands area. Now, I keep telling you today about the major earthquake in Taiwan. Major earthquake down here in Taiwan. Look what we got going here. Straight up here is the uh, Ryukyu Islands. Okinawa. Okinawa here. And just south of mainland um, Japan, Kyoto, Japan, we have another earthquake right here. Right next to it, right here, we have a Sulawesi volcano. Sulawesi volcano has been erupting. Okay? Sulawesi volcano has been erupting here. Okay? Just south of there, Amami Oshima Island. This is a 3.5 earthquake. 3.5 earthquake here in the Ryukyu Islands. We've been seeing a lot of earthquakes here in the Ryukyu Islands. Okay? It's happening. Further south, also in the Ryukyu Islands, this is Satuchi, Kagoshima, Japan. This is also a 2.7 earthquake in the Ryukyu Islands here. Okay? But again, we have just had several major earthquakes over in um, Taiwan. Guess what's going to happen between Taiwan and Japan here? We're going to see larger earthquakes here in the Ryukyu Islands, but what do you think is going to happen in Japan? 
What do you think is going to happen to Japan? The major earthquakes are following this same earthquake fault here. They're following the same earthquake fault. Look out. Japan is next. I believe that energy that we have over in Taiwan is going to be up here by this weekend. There is a distinct possibility we could see 5.0 to 7.0 earthquakes happening right here in Japan by this weekend. A distinct possibility. So we need to keep our eye on what's going on. Over on the west side of Japan, I keep telling you we have aftershocks of an 8.4 earthquake that happened here two months ago. Here in Amazu Ishikawa, Japan, the Nato Peninsula, we have a 3.4 earthquake right here. A 3.4 earthquake here along the Nato Peninsula. They're going to continue to see this. Everywhere where we've had major earthquakes, we see these aftershocks continuing. And USGS shows nothing. Not a thing. Yes, we're having earthquakes over here on Honshu. Girogifu, Japan, this is also near another volcano, Sekirajima Volcano. That is a 2.2 earthquake, not that far from Sekirajima. Over on the east coast, Mobara, Chiba, Japan. This is a populated area. We've seen a lot of earthquakes here lately, mostly fives mostly fives. Today there's a 3.6 here and offshore there's another 3.3 here. Again we're probably going to see fives and up to sevens here along the east coast of Japan this weekend. This weekend. Okay now over Vancouver Island over Vancouver Island Island Sayward British Columbia. This is a 1.33 earthquake tremor. 1.33 tremor over at the northeast side of Vancouver Island. Now, over here in the southern foothills of Olympia, Washington, a volcano again. A volcano. 1.27, excuse me, 1.23 and a 1.19 near Hump Tulips. Washington. Hump Tulips, Washington, in the foothills of Olympia Volcano. Okay? Now, we've continued to show you earthquakes in the Puget Sound area. Today, we don't have any of those. However, just northwest of Mount Rainier, a 1.1 tremor and a 1.51 tremor here near Mount Rainier. That's a fallacy. I want to tell you right now that's a fallacy. There were more earthquakes here around Mount Rainier than they're showing here, and they're not just microquakes or tremors. Okay? Let me show you down here. Well, let's show you the wet the earthquakes west. Okay. Over here we have another volcano. What is it? What do you think this volcano is? Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens. Over to the northwest of Mount St. Helens, we have a 1.21 and a 1.56 in Ona, Alaska, Washington. Ona, Alaska, Washington, one word. O-N-A, Alaska, Washington. Two minor tremors right there. Southwest of there, Pell, P, or Pell, Washington. There is a seismogram at Payel, Washington. Today we had a 1.35 tremor, and that's also not the only earthquake that happened in Payel, Washington. There's a, there's a seismograph over in an elementary school at Payel, Washington. Okay? That's not the only one. Further south, Cathlamet, Washington. A 1.72 tremor there. 
fascinating. Just to the west of Mount St. Helens, they're declaring a 0.82 microquake. Fascinating. Very fascinating. Guess what? They're lying to us again. Look what's happening at Mount St. Helens right there. Four seismic events right here around the rim of Mount St. Helens. In actually five, I'm sorry, five of them. Okay? A minus 0 0.02. And they say this is 25 miles north northeast of Amboy, Washington. Again, they're not saying it's Mount St. Helens. They're not saying it's Mount St. Helens, and they're saying this is 1.1 miles deep. It's down inside the volcano. Okay? A 0 0.02 minus 0 0.02 being above sea level. It's down inside the volcano. They are lying to us again. Okay? Right next to it, a 0 0.19 down inside the volcano. Just south of there, a 0 0.15 microquake. This is a mile deep. This one is a mile deep. Okay? 0 0.15 microquake. Fascinating. Over on the southern rim of Mount St. Helens, they're calling this a minus 0 0.02. Right there. Guess what? This is just under the rim of Mount St. Helens, the southern rim of Mount St. Helens. Guess what? This is two-tenths of a mile deep. Two-tenths of a mile deep. Folks, this is right underneath the summit of Mount St. Helens. Right underneath the summit of Mount St. Helens. And over to the southeast, Again, a minus 0 0.06. Okay? I just love it when they say it's above sea level. This one is 1.1 miles deep. I wish they'd get their numbers right because they're not telling the story. They're not telling the story at all. Now, should we tell you the story of what's actually going on at Mount St. Helens? I've got the information. I have the information, guys. Let's see what's actually going on at Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. Look at this. Folks, I'm showing you one of the seismograms coming from Mount Rainier. This is Camp Sherman. This is on the northern uh, part of the volcano, the northern rim of Mount, of Mount Rainier. Look what we're having. Right up here at the top, these are tremors here from last night. This is all tremor activity last night. Okay, it started recording information here at 5 p.m. last night. Okay, this is all tremor activity. All of a sudden, we have some microquake activity right here. Okay? This is a steam signal here. This is a steam signal. That's a steam signal. This is a steam signal. This is a steam signal here. This is an earthquake here. You can see the dot in the middle of this vertical line here. That is an earthquake. And I believe this is a 3.0 earthquake. Okay? Vertical lines with no dot in the middle of them are all, tremor, are all steam signals. They are all steam signals here, guys. Okay? Let me raise this up in the air a little bit. I want to show you what's actually going on. This steam signal, guess what? Midnight last night. 12 a.m., 12, actually it's not p.m., this is 12 a.m. last night, middle of the night, okay? Tremors, 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 and more tremors. Minor earthquake right here. At least that's what it looks like. Looks like a minor earthquake there. 
look what we have here. See this horizontal line here? It's showing magma here at Mount Rainier. It's a thin line, a thin horizontal line. But we're having a minor earthquake here. Interesting enough, okay? In order to have a minor tremor or a minor earthquake here, you have to have magma fracturing rock inside the volcano. Okay? Hold this in the back of your mind for just a second. Over here, right here, this is another earthquake here. This appears to be a 2.8, 2.9 earthquake here. Tremor here, a tremor here, a minor tremor right there. What is this? Folks, this is something else. This is a magma churn signal. That is a magma churn signal. Magma churn signals tend to be 23 to 24 lines high. Now I'm going to increase the size of this seismogram so you can see it. Magma churn signals tend to be 23 to 24. Four, or 24 uh, lines deep. This one's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines high. This is about 40% of real world. This seismograph was turned way down. The seismogram here, the printed graph is only showing us about 40% of real world. 40% of real world. So this 2.0 earthquake here, guess what? Can you say 3.5 earthquake here? And this 3. Point, or actually that's that's a steam signal here. This 3.0 2.8 2.9, maybe 3.0 earthquake here. 3.5, maybe even 4.0 earthquake here at Mount Rainier. Because we look at these magma churn signals and we find out just how far down that the seismograph was put. So we know. Now these li lines out to the right of that magma churn signal are also steam signatures. These are steam signatures indicating Mount Rainier is steaming. Mount Rainier is steaming, folks. I want to make sure you understand that as well. Okay? Now, just for a minute, just for a minute, I'm just going to move this over just a little bit, and I'm going to turn off the seismograph here just for a minute. I want to tell you something. At the summit of every one of these volcanoes, there's a huge magma plug, or not magma, but lava plug that's hardened there since the last eruption at, in this case, Mount Rainier. Every volcano is the same thing. Every volcano has a solid lava plug at the top of it. The last time the mountain erupted, the lava cooled down and hardened here. And there's a big rock here now. Now, the magma from underneath this big rock continues to pound the underside of this plug, causing cracks in the plug. Just small cracks in the plug. With the small cracks coming through the plug of the volcano, we have steam. Hot steam coming from the magma. Six to seven percent of all magma is water. Six to seven percent of all magma is water. So when the lava plug is pounded from underneath and cracks appear, it allows a steam to escape from the magma. That's what we're seeing at all the volcanoes, including Mount Rainier today. Mount Rainier is steaming, and I showed you here today earthquakes and steam coming from that volcano. 
not just microquakes, earthquakes, earthquakes at Mount Rainier. And there's more. There's more where that came from. This was Camp Sherman. Camp Sherman, guys. Guess what? Down here, just southeast of Mount Rainier, there's another seismogram right here. This is coming from the USGS. This is a USGS seismogram. Look at the earthquakes here at Mount Rainier. At Mount Rainier. Look at this earthquake here. Let me enlarge this so you can see the exact time that this happened. Okay? This particular seismogram was recording at 1900 yesterday, 7 p.m. at the top here. 7 p.m. down here. Down here is 2100 hours, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. down here on the left-hand side. Now, just one line below 9, or 2100, we have 915. Look over here to the right. See this earthquake here? The earthquake is cut off at the top and the bottom. This earthquake is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines high. Okay? This just by itself here would look like a 2.5 earthquake but the top and the bottom have been cut off. So we can't see exactly how strong this earthquake really was. Okay, but look out here to the right. See this triangle out here to the right here? <clears throat> this triangle out goes out here to the right one full minute. Triangle to the right shows us how strong this earthquake was. It's called a secondary wave. This earthquake is at least a 3.5 earthquake here at Mount Rainier. A 3.5. Judging by the width of this quake and the length of this quake as it's pointed out here, guess what? They cut it off at the top and the bottom. But this quake lasted 30 seconds. And we have the secondary wave out to the right. This quake was at least a 3.5 earthquake. They can try to fool us. They can hide the information by cutting it off. But once you've figured out how to read these seismograms, you can tell how strong these earthquakes really were. Now, look at this one that goes down here further. Okay? This one happened just after midnight just after midnight, about 12.25 p.m., about 12.25 p.m. last night. Look at that. Look at the width of this. Look at the width of this. The length here, the top and the bottom have again been cut off, but look at the length. Just this alone would say that this earthquake 2.9, 3.0 earthquake. 2.8, 2.9. Again, the top and the bottom have been cut off. But look at the length out to the right of the secondary wave. The secondary wave is almost two minutes long. Just for kicks and giggles, let's narrow that down to a minute and a half long. This shows us nearly a 3.0 earthquake right here. This lasted about 45 seconds. The shaking lasted 45 seconds. That is a long shake. It doesn't matter whether it's a volcano or anywhere else. 45 seconds of shaking is a long time of shaking. The secondary quake here lasted almost two minutes out. This earthquake was a 4.0 earthquake at Mount Rainier last night. Mount Rainier last night. Okay? Okay? 
that earthquake shows it to be just after midnight. Look at all the shaking now here. Where did this come from? More shaking down in Taiwan. More shaking down in Taiwan. Look up here. Okay. The Taiwanese earthquake hit just about right here. Seven forty eight PM last night. Here. They covered up that earthquake. They're not letting us see the original Taiwanese earthquake here. They have covered it up. We're seeing earthquake aftershocks right here. Substantial earthquake aftershocks. A 6.4 earthquake right here. 6.4 earthquake hit last night right about this time. Okay, look at all this magma here. All of these lines are what they call magma pulse. Magma pulse signals, where we have thinner lines getting into larger lines and getting thinner again, or larger lines going into thinner lines and getting thicker again. They're called magma pulse signals. Look at each individual line here where we have magma. You see vertical lines going through these larger dark blue or light blue lines here. That's indicating that we've had a tremor because of rock fracturing down inside the volcano. Look down here today, early this morning. This is Pacific time this morning. 5 a.m. Pacific time. Look at all this lava here. A half hour worth of lines here. We're seeing tremors and or earthquakes here at Mount St. Helens because of the fracturing of rock inside the volcano. That's what we're seeing here. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere the lava calms down and it doesn't show hardly anything going on. That doesn't happen unless they've turned the seismograph down. That's what they've done here. Because there's no evidence of any other magma coming into the volcano here. Yes, we have some small tremors here, occasionally. But that's just about all that happened here. Interesting enough, at Mount Rainier. We're getting a, a time crunch here, so I'm going to go now over to Mount St. Helens. I want what's going on at Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens has been busy. Very, very busy. Okay. Folks, this is the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network that we're showing here. This is September lobe at Mount St. Helens. September lobe at Mount St. Helens. September lobe is a seismograph sitting on top of the summit of Mount St. Helens. And we know we're having earthquakes there. Look at this line here. This is yesterday afternoon, 5 p.m. Look at all these earthquakes here. This is at Mount St. Helens. What happened here? There's nothing else showing here. They turned down the seismograph. All of this here is false information. They turn down the seismograph. This is it, just the shift change of the seismograph paper. We're seeing the shift change. We're seeing earthquakes that happened yesterday afternoon right before shift change of the paper. They changed the shift here but they could not or did not take this off. They didn't think about disregarding this. But they're not showing anything else after that. They are lying through their teeth. 
they're actually lying through their teeth and I can prove it. Let's go over and check and see what happens at Mount St. Helens over here also on another channel at September Loeb. Look what we're seeing here. See all of this, these lines here? These are called very low frequency lines. This is caused by magma coming into Mount St. Helens. Magma coming into Mount St. Helens. These, this part of the upper seismogram would be what the other seismograph was showing. The other seismogram was showing. Activity here. Earthquakes hitting Mount St. Helens. Why did it not continue? Because this seismogram here is showing it continuing. Literally all night and all day long here at Mount St. Helens. No joke, guys. This is real. This is real. You can't make this stuff up. The agency out and out lying to us, covering up information. Covering up information. This is insane. This is insane. When you get this much activity, the magma is causing these VLF lines that you're seeing here. The magma is causing each of these lines here to go crazy. All of these lines fluctuating like this is showing magma coming into the magma chair, or coming into the magma chamber of this volcano, Mount St. Helens. Now, a little while ago, we had Trevor Harper here in the chat. He said something very important here, and I'm going to repeat it right now. I want everybody to know what he said, okay? He said, you can see what's going on, people. This is why Ron is doing this. This is not a joke. Not trying to cause fear factor here, but it's finally time to start getting ready for something major that might trip. That's exactly right. Something major is about to happen. USBS can try to tell us that nothing's going on. United States Geological Survey can try to tell us that nothing's going on, which could not be further from the truth. Fact. Unreal. Heidi Petrick is here in the chat just a few minutes ago. She says she works at the hatchery in Orteen, Washington, about 30 miles from Mount Rainier. She says, quote, I have noticed what looks like ash on my windshield after work. Is Mount Rainier dropping ash? Possibly. How big are those holes in that lava rock that plug of the volcano. How big are those holes? If those holes are big, big enough, it might be pushing that steam out of the volcano. It might be pushing that steam out of the volcano and then look what happens. You might be seeing ash coming from Mount Rainier. Another 4.3 over it. Um, Taiwan uh, Island. Another 4.39 minutes ago at Taiwan. Incredible. This is what's going on. Polly, have a good night. Thank you for being here with us. We appreciate each and every one of you here. It means a great deal to us. Okay? Demon Catman's been here already all evening. We appreciate Dean being here. This is very interesting, Trevor and Heidi. Please email Ron with the information. And he put the email address here. Okay? RLT NSPD EMA at gmail.com. Unreal. Trevor Harper is saying we found Canada leaves in our minds, leaves in our minds here in Utah. We have tons of, 
of springs here in southern Utah. You got, you're right. You have tons of springs. In southern Utah, guys, over in St. In around St. George at Enterprise, Utah, we have volcanoes there. The other day, I believe it was yesterday, we had some earthquakes north of St. George in a place called Cedar City, around Cedar City, Utah. There are also volcanoes all around Cedar City as well. That is why they had earthquakes in Cedar City, Cedar City, Utah. Okay, there's volcanoes everywhere. I promise you that. There's volcanoes everywhere. Okay. I've done my research. I've lived in Utah for 10 years. Go figure. I have traveled the Interstate 15 corridor from San Diego City all the way up to Yellowstone. Interstate 15 goes all the way up to Yellowstone, guys. I've traveled it. I know the area very well. I've traveled all the way through St. St. George, all the way to the west side of Cedar City, all the way to Salt Lake City. I've done that. I've also driven from Denver up Interstate 70, going through the tunnel, the Eisenhower Tunnel at the summit of the Rocky Mountains there. There are also two volcanoes over there in the Rocky Mountains. Did you know that? Two volcanoes. One of them is called No Name Volcano. No Name Volcano. Fascinating, huh? Now, why am I telling you all this? Just as Trevor and Linda Covington have said, you need to get prepared. You need to be prepared. I've shown you earthquakes all around the globe tonight. I've shown you earthquakes in the Pacific Northwest. Two major volcanoes over in the Pacific Northwest, Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens, are getting going. I showed you the factual information, and I could also show you the um, the VOF wave channels at Mount Rainier as well. Plenty of magma going into Mount Rainier, and plenty of magma going into Mount St. Helens, causing fracturing of rocks in both volcanoes. Both volcanoes are getting ready to blow. Okay. You need to be aware of this. You folks over in Washington need to be aware of this. Now, tomorrow night is Thursday night. I want to spend some time giving you a history of Mount St. Helens and what has happened. You need to be aware of it. So we're going to talk a little bit about Mount St. Helens tomorrow night. All of you need to be aware of it. Things are happening. I promise you stuff is happening all around the globe. We've talked about the west coast of North America. Canada, Washington, Oregon, and California. There is movement. There is volcanic movement. There's also earthquake movement up and down the entire west coast. We've talked about the New Madrid Fault. There's also movement on the New Madrid Fault. We talked about the East Coast and why the East Coast is moving. We talked about Iceland. Iceland still has two craters that are having lava coming, sipping out, seeping out of those two craters. Scientists believe that the volcano over on Iceland is slowing down and may come to a full stop very soon. At least that's what they're hoping. Everybody is. But there's another volcano to the north, Oscar Volcano. It has a, a very cold lake up at the top of that volcano. It's starting to shake. There's only one reason a volcano starts to shake. Magma entering that volcano causing 
rock fracturing inside the volcano. You need to know about it. Like I said, Friday, we're going to have Preparedness Friday. We're going to talk about events that are happening, earthquakes and other things around the world. You need to know. But we're also going to talk about emergency preparedness. Okay? Stuff is happening. Everybody needs to be prepared. Everyone needs to be prepared, guys. Now is the time. We don't have much more time left. Now, before we leave, I want to make a statement that I want you guys to pay attention to. I want you to pass this on everywhere. Frankly, I'm getting very tired of what I am hearing in social media, both on YouTube, Facebook, over on MeWe, which is another Facebook-like platform that I'm on, and also over on Telegram. I'm hearing all kinds of crap. All kinds of crap. I'm not yelling at you guys. I'm tired of hearing it. April 8th, we're going to have an eclipse of the sun. All that means is between the sun and us, we're going to have the moon go between us. Okay? That's all that means. Another 5.0 over in Chile. We've already had three 5.0 large earthquakes in Chile. We've had another one over just east of the Andes Mountains in Peru. Okay? Three large earthquakes in South America as well as a bunch of fours and threes. Earthquakes happening all over South America. Earthquakes happening in Southern Mexico. And we have earthquakes going up the Gulf of California. Coming into Southern California. Earthquakes happening everywhere. Getting back to what I was talking about, we are hearing all kinds of crap from people. They're scared straight. They're trying, they're putting out fear porn to everywhere. I want to make one thing perfectly clear. We are not going to have a major event unless the terrorists break loose and the people, the seven million people plus that have come across the southern border into the United States unless they cause problems we're not going to have a biological incident anywhere in the United States on the eclipse day of April 8th. I'm getting tired of hearing about it. It's not you guys that are putting it out. But social media is talking this up. I want it stopped. They're conjecturing. They have no proof of anything. There is absolutely what, not one dime worth of truth. And yet they're pushing this fear porn that the United States is going to get attacked just because we have a solar eclipse. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen like that. Okay? A biological e event dropping gas into the citizens of the United States, not going to happen. Now, if it does, you guys can throw egg in my face. This is fear porn, guys. They want to scare the crap out of everybody. And one of my friends on one of our chat links over on Facebook Messenger was pushing it today. I am tired of it. I am fed up with fear porn. These people that are pushing fear porn are going to get their minds lambasted. When it doesn't happen and hundreds of thousands of people have been seeing this fear porn, all of a sudden these people will disappear. They're just getting people riled up and it's, nothing's going to happen. There is no proof of it. I don't see any activity with the military, and I have military contacts all over the United States and all around the world. I do not see it happening. I don't care what person puts it out. I do not see it happening. It is fear porn. 
make no mistake about it, it is fear porn. It's not going to happen. Don Patokas here in the chat saying, bingo, Ron. It's not going to happen. I'm tired of the fear board. One of my own friends posted it in Donnie's Den, which is Donnie's or Don Patoka's chat room on Facebook Messenger. Any one of you can join. It's wide open. Look for Donnie's Den. You can also work, look at earthquakes and volcanoes or quakes and volcanoes. That's also one of our own chat rooms. We have a politics chat room. We have a weather chat room as well. Weather and space weather chat room. You can look for them over on Messenger. We're there. But what is going on here is crap. It needs to come to a freaking stop. All of us need to get on social media when we see this crap coming out from these stupid people and say, stop it. Stop it right now. There is no proof of that happening. Until we have proof, we are going to say that it's not going to happen. Plain and simple. It's crap, guys. And I need your help to try to stop it. This is propaganda, as, as Don is saying in the chat tonight. It's propaganda from our enemies. It's from our enemies trying to poison our minds. This friend of mine over in Donnie's Den this afternoon said maybe we ought to stay indoors on the 8th and watch it from indoors. Isn't that something? Trying to tell us to stay indoors when there's nothing going to happen except the moon going between the earth and the sun. Nothing is going to happen. Please help me stop this fear porn. It's got to stop. When I see it come up in, on the YouTube channel, I'm going to report it. Fear porn is fear, period. It should not be happening. It's not going to happen. And I will report these guys to YouTube and take them down. I'm going to report these people myself and take them down. This is crap. June Love says, if these American volcanoes erupt, will it impact the eastern side of the country? Yes. Asking if the eastern side of the country will be affected in any way? Yes. That the winds coming from Alaska, coming across the Gulf of Alaska into Washington and Oregon and Canada, it's going to push that ash to the east. The last time Mount Rainier erupted, that ash got over into Minnesota and Wisconsin. It could go even further depending on the size of the eruption. Okay? This could be a stupid question, but I can imagine multiple scenarios, but I don't have knowledge on it. I do. Thank you for the question. It was not a stupid question, Jim. That was an awesome question. Yes, there will be ash leaving Washington and Oregon depending on where the volcano is, but it'll be headed east. And all that sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide will also, also be going into the air. But as it goes across the states, that concentration of toxic gas and fumes will get less and less the further away it gets. But right there at the eruption site, people need, need to be very much aware that there's toxic sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide coming from the volcanic eruption. And Seattle, Tacoma area, and points all around Mount Rainier and all around Mount St. Helens need to be aware of this. There will be lava flows down the sides of the mountain. There will be lahars magma, or excuse me, not magma, lava pushing down the sides of the volcanoes into creeks, streams, and rivers, causing a great deal of debris as well as trees, branches, rocks, and other debris, debris coming off the mountain of the volcano, 
clogging the rivers and everything else, and the rivers then, rivers and streams overflowing their banks, causing damage to property and possibly the life of the people there. That's one reason why I'm going to talk about Mount Rainier tomorrow. You folks need to know what happened the last couple times Mount St. Helens erupted. So we are going to be talking about it. Carl Smith is asking, I've been concerned about Yellowstone. You don't have much to be concerned about. There is not enough activity at Yellowstone to warrant any fear. Again, there are not enough earthquakes happening or tremors or microquakes happening in or around the Yellowstone volcano. It's not. We would have to have almost continuous 4.5 modern earthquakes happening at Yellowstone to expect any kind of eruption blast out of Yellowstone. It's not happening, at least right now. If Mount Yellowstone erupts, I will give you information prior to the eruption. I am monitoring Yellowstone. Anybody that's saying that Yellowstone is about to erupt needs their brain cleaned out. They're also putting out fear porn. None of these questions are stupid, but there's enough people putting out fear porn, it's garbage. It's trash. You need to be aware of that right now. Okay? Thank you for asking. That's not a dumb question. Okay? Not a, not, not a dumb question at all. If Yellowstone kicks up, I'll tell you about it. There is a very good possibility that I talked about the other night, yesterday even, New Matter Fall. Remember me telling you about that? The New Matter Fall kicking up, an 8.0 plus earthquake, and volcanoes in and around the Mississippi River. Yes, that's going to happen. Promise you, it's going to happen. It's going to happen again very soon. There is enough evidence out there showing increased activity along the pneumatic fault. It's going to happen. I've shown you evidence of what's going on in Southern California, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Imperial counties, and Orange and Riverside County as well. You need to be aware of it. There's going to be a major earthquake in Southern California soon. It's a matter of time. I don't know the date or the time, but it's a matter of time. It's going to happen. Okay? If you're concerned about China attacking us or Russia, Don Patokin just put up a book. The Art of War. The Art of War. Okay? It's a great book. I read it several times a couple years ago. I don't know whether I still have it in my library here. But it's a great book. Read it. Now, Don Patoka also said something that I consider to be very, very important. He said, fear does not stop death. It stops life. Fear stops life. Worrying about something does not take away from tomorrow's troubles. It takes away today's peace. And that's exactly what our enemies want us to believe. They want us to believe that peace is far away. Peace is not far away. They want to start wars. They're going to have a war. It's not going to happen on April 8th. You need to be proactively prepared, planned, and make sure you have water, that you have food, that you have a medical kit, a fully stocked medical kit. Make sure you have your prescription drugs. Yeah, you need that. You need to be planned, prepared, for everything. Stuff is going to happen. It's a matter of time. 
it's a matter of time. 23 Angel Fly says she lives on the New Madrid Fault. Many of you do. I can count on one hand friends of mine that live on the New Madrid Fault. Friends of mine. People here, the EMA family, that live on the New Madrid Fault. People that I've known for years. Yeah. Friends of mine. And I know exactly what's going to happen. And I have put out the warning. Please pass it on from me. I'd appreciate it. We're trying to save lives here. Now, I want to go over to Romans tonight. I put out a devotional every night after I get through talking about what's going on around us. I want to go over to Romans here. Romans, the eighth chapter. Okay? This has pertinent information for us. Now, the author of Romans is important. Okay? They gave us a lot of good information here. A lot of good information. The Romans is an epistle, a letter from Paul to the Roman people. Here in chapter 8, it's very important. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Sin. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. 5.5 over in Taiwan a few minutes ago. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Mortify. Death to fear. Death to fear. Okay? Don't do it. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Shall I read that top of that verse again? Verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Who is Apostle Paul talking to? The Romans and all of us. The Apostles saw our day. The Apostles of, and Prophets of the Bible saw our day. They're telling us what's going on. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer from him, that we may be glorified, we may also be glorified together. This is apostle, the apostle of God talking to us. Jesus Christ taught his apostles. This is an apostle of God speaking to us. Apostles and prophets are still here on the earth today. Apostles and prophets of God are still here on this earth today. I hope that we can follow them. I hope that we can follow them in every way possible. Our own salvation depends on it. Our own salvation depends on it. Folks, I told you the truth. I have backed it up with facts tonight. I've shown you the earthquakes. I have shown you the seismograms of what's going on. I have shown you the Helia plots showing that the United States Geological Survey and the other agencies lied about the size of the Taiwanese, Taiwanese quake. It was much larger. And yes, people have been killed in that quake. And people have been injured in that quake. It's going to happen again and again and again until the coming of Jesus Christ. 
the second coming of Jesus Christ. You need to be prepared, folks. You need to be prepared. You are my family. All of you are my family. I try to give you a spiritual thought, a spiritual devotional to measure out with what's going on around us. We're going to help balance out our lives, as Laura Marie put in the chat a few minutes ago. We need something to balance out our lives. We're being attacked from all sides, even with fear porn. Don't believe it. Fight against it. Don't believe it and follow God. Follow God in the scriptures and you will be blessed. I promise you. I promise you in the name of Jesus Christ, if you follow the Lord's appointed, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. Susan Clark says here in the chat, she's frustrated. I've been wanting to buy a little TV just in case. Susan, do it if you have the money. Don't make major expenditures right now. Please do not make major expenditures. Take care of your money. But buying a small TV may be an investment for your future, for your sanity. I don't watch network TV hardly at all. I don't. I stay away from the garbage that's out there. I get my information from social media. I balance it out trying to find the truth, and when I do, I tell all of you about it. That's the way we operate here on the, in the EMA family. We tell you the truth and share it f fully to all of you. People here in the chat try sharing the truth also. All of my mods do that. My mods try to temper people that are trying to put out trash to us. We don't need that. We need fair and balanced reporting, number one, and we need people to follow God. I'm giving you reports of what's going on around us so you'll know what's happening so you can be prepared. Knowing what disasters and emergencies are out there around us will give us the impetus to know what's happening so we can prepare for whatever's going on. It doesn't matter whether it's a winter storm, anything to do with the weather, anything else, we need to be prepared. By the way, we have a great huge storm system going across Indiana, Ohio, and upwards to the East Coast. Very cold rain and snow is still out there. It's April. This is normal. You folks on the East coast of North America, upon the northern part of North America, beware. You're going to get heavy rain and snow going up in eastern Canada as well where Richard Smith is. And my buddy, Canadian Patriot One. You guys are need, going to need prepared because there's more snow coming. Just as it was starting to melt, there's more snow coming. But right behind that, there's a heat front that's going that's in the central United States and that's going to also pu push east. But this storm over Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, River Valley area going up to the northeast, you guys are ha going to have a storm and it's actually spinning like this. It's spinning like this. It's going to be there for a while. That bad storm bringing cold, rainy and snow weather, it's going to be here for a while. Okay, down south on the east coast, you all also have storm that's coming through. North, South Carolina, and Georgia, you have a storm coming through, and until it gets off the east coast, you guys are going to see heavy rain and possibility of tornadoes tonight. Be aware of it. Be aware of it. It's coming. Laura Marie says, audio very interrupted. I can't understand what Ron's saying. Guess what? YouTube doesn't like us. They don't like me telling the truth to all of you. It's going to be there for a while. I'm sorry yeah, you're getting snow, buffered. Rainy, cold, rainy, snow I'm sorry we're getting buffered. It's bad. Now, may God bless you. May God be with you. 
Make sure you're praying. Make sure you continue to pray. Make sure you're preparing. Make sure you're writing emergency preparedness plans for whatever might come your way. It doesn't matter where you're at, whether you're in Australia or New Zealand, over in Indonesia, in South America, Central America, Mexico, Canada, England, over in Sylvania, Italy, anywhere. Get prepared and get prepared now. It's your time. It's our time. We are together. Please share this program far and wide with your family, with your extended family, your neighbors, your friends, your social media contacts, and even the people you work with. Make sure this channel goes far and wide. Be advised, YouTube is still unsubscribing people. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please do so. There are 29% of the people that are watching this channel that are not subscribed. Please do so. It's important for your health, your welfare, and your safety. Subscribe to this channel. When you do so, click on that little bell icon. <coughs> click on that little bell icon. Excuse me. When you do do that, there will be a drop-down menu of three items. Click on the word ALL. That should get you subscribed and notified to our channel so you'll know when we come on the air. If anything major happens, we will be on the air to talk about it. I told you last night that this morning we would be on the air, but I was still compiling information about the Taiwanese quake. So I kept it all until this evening. That's why I was not on the air earlier today. There is a certain amount of element that I need to have, an element of surety about what's going on. I will not come on the air and rattle my jowls. It's not going to happen. I will come on the air when I have all the facts put together. I'm not going to come out here and rattle my jowls and tell you something that's not true. I'm going to give you truth. The truth, as Glenn Beck says, stops here. Glenn Beck taught me that a long time ago. The truth stops here. I'm not going to give you any crap here. You're going to get the truth. Laura Marie says the audio is back. Thank you so much. May God bless you now. Stay prayed up, everyone. I love you, and please know that God loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to return to him when it's time. Right now, it's not the time. God be with you until we meet again. May God bless you. May God be with you and your families. I pray for that every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Have a good night, everyone. I love you very much. We will see you over the road. Like I said, if anything else happens, we'll be back on the air to tell you about it as soon as the information becomes available. We will see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Much love.